I want to share some information that every person who had their gallbladder removed should know about. Unfortunately, they're not told this information. Now, maybe you have a gallbladder problem, let's say gallstones, and you're considering getting surgery. I also want to cover some data about that. And I will cover all the complications that can happen once they remove the gallbladder and then what you can do about it naturally. But you can live a long life and be perfectly healthy without a gallbladder. Okay, but 40% of the people who have their gallbladder removed end up having persisting complications and pain and symptoms for at least a year, sometimes a lot longer, either constipation or diarrhea, anal leakage. And you might even feel like a full sensation underneath your right rib cage that could refer to the right shoulder. Or you might have something called Collins sign, which is the um, discomfort on the tip of your scapula on the right side. So if you reach your hand back there, it's like you might feel some weird thing going on. Now, let's say you have gallstones and they're recommending getting surgery. Well, I'm going to show you some other things that you might want to look at. But there's also the option of what's called lithotripsy, which is using sound waves to break up those stones versus doing a surgery to remove the gallbladder. If anyone tells you that the gallbladder is an extra organ that is not needed, they are lying to you because we need the gallbladder. It has a very important function. So the gallbladder is an extension of the liver. So every time you eat, your gallbladder contracts and it releases this super concentrated uh, fluid called bile that empties into the small intestine. And so the gallbladder is just a sac to hold and concentrate the bile. Well, what bile does is it starts to break down the fats into smaller little bits, like detergent. So it's kind of like dissolving the grease. Okay, I'm just gonna break it down into smaller little pieces until we have these tiny little, you know, this is basically the end product of bile salts right here. So now the pancreas can come in there and do the rest of the work. It releases an enzyme to help you dissolve fats called lipase, and it'll take these little small little particles and break them down further because now there's more surface area for that enzyme to attack to dissolve. So then you have the benefit of certain things in fats like fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K1, vitamin K2, the essential fatty acids, omega-3, omega-6. Without bile, you will not be able to extract the fat nutrients from the fat that you eat. So bile is really important. And it's the bile that also helps you get rid of excess cholesterol. Bile has some other purposes too. Bile stimulates the bile flow. <laughs> so in other words, if you don't have enough bile, okay, bile salts, what will happen is things will kind of, they won't move that well through the ducts. Because you see, there's a condition which is called bile sludge, which is basically a deficiency of bile, that you get this um, kind of the stagnant flow of bile into the bile ducts. And if we take a look at what is a gallstone, it's basically a super concentrated cholesterol stone. And the reason why it turned into a cholesterol stone that's super concentrated is because you didn't have enough bile to keep it loose. And this is why one of the remedies for dissolving a stone is to take bile salts after you eat. If you're low in bile salts, guess what your liver is going to do? It's going to make more bile and make more cholesterol. 75% of all the cholesterol in your body actually is made by your own body. It's not all diet. Only 25% is diet. So uh, this is really important to know if you have a cholesterol problem. It could just be a gallbladder issue or a liver problem because you're not making enough bile. Now, bile is also made by your microbes, and so that's called secondary bile. This bile thing is really important. Bile salts also help uh, get rid of um, microbes in the small intestine. So in other words, we don't want a lot of microbes in the small intestine. So the bile that's dumped into the small intestine kind of clears out the microbes 
in the small intestine. And then once the bile gets to the last part of the small intestine, it gets reabsorbed and gets recycled. So I want to talk about what creates a bile deficiency. Estrogen is one. That would include birth control pills, being pregnant, you know, any type of estrogen can do it. And this is probably why women have more gallstones than men, which is related to stress, but also prednisone. The medication prednisone could also set you up for this. This is why diabetics have a higher um, risk of getting gallstones. And people that have higher carbohydrate diets also are at more risk of getting gallstones. If someone is overweight, they could actually be at risk because people that are overweight have higher amounts of fasting insulin. Anyone with liver disease, either a fatty liver, cirrhosis, or hepatitis, why? Because the very cells that make bile are in your liver. Being on a low-fat diet can set you up for a problem with gallstones too. Why? Because take a while, guess what triggers the release of bile? Fat in the diet. Also, if you're taking PPIs, okay, and acids, why? Because part of the digestive process involves hydrochloric acid. And if you don't have enough hydrochloric acid, then there's going to be an alteration in pH in your small intestine. There's going to be a lack of stimulus of the release of the gallbladder. Also, if you're low in folate, magnesium, vitamin C, and even calcium can all set you up for a gallstone. If you're low in melatonin, you could be a risk significantly of getting a gallstone. Now, what is this melatonin connection? Melatonin is used in the mitochondria. The little cells in the bile ducts actually make melatonin. And melatonin can act as an antioxidant to protect the lining of the bile ducts from developing inflammation and developing fibrosis within the bile ducts. Let's say, for example, you had the gallbladder removed and now you have problems, okay? You have symptoms. There's a couple things that I would highly recommend. Do some gentle acupressure, not on the scar or not over the gallbladder, but on the opposite mirror image side, which is over your pancreas. So I'm gonna stand up and show you right here. So this is where the gallbladder is. It's underneath the right rib cage, right through in here, okay? It's about an inch off the midline, right through in here. Okay, so what you do is you would work on the mirror image side on the opposite side and just press deep inside here. So what's going to happen, it's actually going to stimulate the pancreas to work better to help in your digestive flows because the problem is that now that you don't have a gallbladder and you may be deficient in bile, the other organs have to take up the slack and have to work harder. And the pancreas definitely is the organ that's going to have to kick in there and produce more enzymes to do the work of what the gallbladder or a bile should be doing. You'll find when you press into that left side, it's going to be very tender. Just go at your own pace and then keep working on it, like maybe two minutes twice a day. And you're going to find you're going to have better digestion, less pain where the gallbladder was. You'll have more drainage. Also, your stool can tell you a lot about what's going on with your bile. If the stool is gray or pale or white colored, then chances are you need bile. If the stool floats, that means there's fat in it because you didn't break it down. That could mean you need more bile. The simple solution is just to take some uh, bile salts after you eat. You see, they removed the gallbladder, but they didn't really fix the real problem, which is the the concentrated mixture of cholesterol versus the bile. Let's say, for example, you had your gallbladder out and now you have diarrhea, okay? In this situation, it's the opposite of constipation. You don't want to take bile salts. Why? Because taking more bile salts is going to loosen up your stool even more and give you more diarrhea. There's a certain medication that you have to get with your doctor to get that kind of slows down this release of bile. And the other thing is, let's say you start taking bile salts and, oh, wow, that really handled my constipation, but then all of a sudden you got diarrhea. Well, that could mean that you just back off and take a lot less. So you really want to evaluate the symptoms, the bowel movements, and the stool as to how much bile, if any, you need. I mentioned bile sludge, right, which is basically a thickened 
uh, material of cholesterol, and we're, it's not developed into a stone yet, but it's on its way. Uh, there's a great remedy for that called tutka. That is a, a remedy that should be taken on an empty stomach because you don't necessarily want that to help you to digest. You want that to, like I said before, increase the flow of bile through these bile ducts. Anytime you take bile and things get worse, you don't feel right, it doesn't help you, then what that means is you don't need bile, you need more hydrochloric acid in the stomach. And I would take betaine hydrochloride, okay? You can get them in little pills. Now you might say, well, wow, I just wasted money buying the bile salts. Well, I mean, you could spend a lot of money on a functional gallbladder test and a certain test to put a scope down your esophagus to measure the pH of your acid in your stomach. I think spending a little money on a couple different remedies to see what helps you might be a little bit cheaper. Now, another thing that um, I think would be very beneficial is to increase your melatonin in your body. One way to do that is just to get a good night's sleep and make sure it's dark in the room before you go to sleep. But you can also expose yourself to infrared by going outside more from the sun, you get infrared or candles around at night or a fireplace or a campfire all gives you this infrared, which will increase melatonin. And then another remedy that can help increase the production of bile from the liver is milk thistle. Also, beets can help. Dandelion greens is another one that can help. Artichoke is something that can help increase bile production. And as far as the diet in general, the macros should be low carb, moderate fat, not low fat, and moderate protein, and have a salad each day. Now, since we're on the topic of bile salts, I have a very interesting video on tatka that I think you will really like. So I put that up right here. Check it out. 